Okay, I'm going to stop this right here because this you can see what's going to happen next. Um, I'm going to basically drop this whole dollop in my pan. It's got to splash all over and make a great big mess. So, first tip: don't do it. Don't do this. Don't do what I did here. So, this may be a a little bit different video. I usually make either an environmental video sometimes or a, um, basically a video for health promotion. And this is really all those put together. Um, one of the reasons why we started making yogurt, we were just uh, horrified at how much plastic we were throwing away per week, per week, per month, whatever. And so we decided, you know, let's just go ahead and see what we can do to make our own yogurt here too. And I literally was minutes away from ordering a yogurt ma yogurt maker. But I think, you know, that's the last thing I want is something else in the kitchen here and something else made of plastic. So this is what we did here too. The yogurt we make, I think it's the best yogurt. My, both my wife and I say it's the best yogurt we've ever had in our life. Uh, it's nice and thick. It is a unique blend we put together, a uh, pair of casei, uh, plus two cultures from Jabani and Danon. So if you've not heard of pair of casei, just start looking these things up. Look at the research on here too. I'll talk a little bit later about it as well here too. But um, yeah, this has been quite a good experiment here to work on. So now here's some good, here's some better tips. I use whole milk, okay? Uh, whole milk is not the demon that the sugar industry thinks we, it should be, okay? If you want thick yogurt, use whole milk. Also, heat it slowly up to 180 degrees, but then keep it there for basically for 25 minutes, okay? What that does, it takes these little proteins and denatures them. It kind of breaks them apart, and all these long protein chains then can form together a little bit to make this thicker yogurt later on. Okay. Also, you got to cool it, of course, to 110. Add the cultures at that time. Um, don't be jiggling it around. Keep it nice and quiet while it's actually um, inoculating and, and working here, too. And again, I use one-third Danon plain, one-third Chubani plain, and one-third of the Lactobacillus pericasei. I get mine from the Good Culture Cottage Cheese. Uh, and again, I don't care if you're looking for mental health, gut health, immune health, Paracasi has got a ton of research on it right now, so go ahead and just look that up. I, I was just shocked. In fact, at the same time we were trying to eliminate the plastic, we kept finding more and more research on this. Of course, I'm not using plastic. I'm using these uh, pint jars, glass jars, and I'm actually, I repurposed my um, slow cooker. This is it right here. Unfortunately, even at the slowest, lowest setting, it was still too hot. It, would, it actually would cook the culture, not just inoculate it and, and kind of grow it. So I thought, well, hey, I've been doing a lot of work with solid-state relays, Arduinos, and temperature sensors, so uh, why, not, why not put some together? So this was a one-day build. Instead of actually ordering that offline, the yogurt maker, I thought, okay, let's just see what I can do in one day. And so I'm not a hoarder, but I do like what Thomas Edison said about to invent um, – it takes a good imagination and a good pile of junk. Well, hey, I got the junk here. So anyway, so this is what I've done. It holds five quarts. There's water here. You can see here as well. I do not put my sensor in the water. The sensor is actually hooked on the back. And this is the whole box here. And I'll go in detail about how to put this together. In fact, if you've ever wanted to do an Arduino project, never really done one, this is a really great starting project. It's very simple. It's actually, a pretty low uh, part count. And I've uploaded all the software. You can download the whole thing and plug it in here too. This is both the saying from Thomas Edison, but also the display from my uh, yogurt maker. Now it does say 104 here. I, I moved the wires around because they, these, these analog uh, TMZ 36s I'm using, they're a little bit susceptible here too. Uh, I don't like these. Actually, I've been using the uh, DS18B20s now. Uh, they're a lot more stable and I can bust them together, but I had a bunch of these things left over and for this purpose It's really was great. I okay now again. I don't put mine in the water. I basically just tape it on the back uh, I also put a towel around the whole thing when, when I got it here, too And so there is a little difference between what I'm reading and actually what the display says, but you can calibrate that This is the inside. This is the little holder. I have you can download from Thingiverse um, this is the a wall receptacle I, I just actually bolted to the bottom, solid state relay and my display. Uh, here is my um, 
wires coming and going from both in the wall and I'm plugging here too and I did make a video here coming up here about how to do this so here it is uh, anyway what I did here this is a schematics I put together uh, to help explain the uh, Arduino controlled yogurt maker um, I figured this is the best representation I can do to help people uh, do what I've done here too if they want to go down this route it's a, it's a, this is a great starting project for Arduino um, a very very small pa a part count um, I happen to have everything on hand well, when I had my one day build building this so um, it worked really well but what I have here down here this is just a wall plug okay um, that's my representation of a wall plug and inside all these extension cords or wall plugs or whatever you're going to have three wires you have a black wire usually uh, hopefully a, a white wire sometimes it's red and then also a green wire the green wire is usually ground okay and what this is a representation of, of course, is this little wall plug right here. Okay, I plugged this in the bottom, uh, mounted this in the bottom of my case. In fact, what I did here, I used these little standoffs and mounted those things in the holes here. Um, these kind of surface mount holes for these plugs. And then I, then I screwed um, this up from the bottom with a small bolt countersunk at the bottom. So it, it makes it real secure. It's not floating around here too. So, and what, what you want to do is just kind of wire up this first. And you can always get one of these little checkers here too. You can just plug this right into the receptacle you just wired up, and it'll tell you by the color combination if you ever think, have everything correct. Um, on these plugs, you're going to see there's a kind of a, a copper side, and then it's kind of a silver side. Well, those copper, gold color, whatever in the side, that's that's always the black side. That's why you're always hooking the, the black wires too, and the other side, the silver side, that's more of your the white. Or, or the red, whatever your case may be. And of course, then they got a green plug going to the green uh, ground, the bottom here too. So uh, that's pretty simple then too. So then there are two connectors on each one of these. Okay. You see just two gold um, posters on there too. And that's what these things right here represent. Okay. So what you're going to do here, this black wire is going to not only go right to your plug, but it's also going to continue on and go right into your AC of your solid state relay. Now, usually this is the line side. Many times these are marked as number one or number two. This one doesn't have line and load. It just has one and two. And these uh, these solid state relays come in different flavors. Okay. Sometimes they're DC to controlling DC. Sometimes they're AC controlling AC. But what you want here is a DC controlling an AC output. Okay. That way you can use your um, Arduino. It's just five volts of the DC in will turn on this as a switch activating your plug here now this is the the plug that you're going to plug your slow cooker into here too and what's not pictured here i didn't put the ground here uh but if you do have a ground in that plug um yeah just p hook them both to the ground here too so you'll have them all hooked together then too so that's really the ac side here the uh, white side or the red side whatever you got they're hooked together on the same plug same line here too and so this thing here, this is, sits in the bottom of your box. And this is what I plug my, my transformer into, my wall wart. And that's what I use to power the Arduino. Now on the Arduino, on the other side here, what I'm using here is this TMP36. Now this is actually a tem an analog output temperature sensor. It varies the voltage by the temperature. And these things kind of bounce around quite a lot. And so I've got, if you look at my program, I think I'm averaging this like 64 times to get a nice fairly um, quiet reading otherwise it's bouncing three or four degrees up and down all the time and uh, I put the pinouts on this thing if you're looking at it from the bottom the V sub C of course that's just your five volts or sorry 3.3 .3 volts in this case you can use five volts but I understand 3.3 will give you a little bit higher accuracy the ground of course that goes down the ground and your analog out of course goes to your AO or your analog pin zero then too and those are really the only hookups you're, you're using. Now, I probably have about you know, two foot of wire uh, from my temperature sensor to the Arduino um, just to get it in place and um, get it a little farther away than I needed it. And, you know, so anyway, now on my LCD monitor or my little display here, this is the one I just had left over. This is actually what's called a 2004 2004 ALCD. Now, I have not used this because it uses the SCL and SDA pins of the Arduino. And a lot of times I'm using those things for other purposes. So I didn't want conflicts. So this is just kind of sit in the drawer for a while. 
I, I really like the serial on board um, LCDs from say Spark Fun or uh, Adafruit um, because you can use them on almost on, on any pen and they're really great to use and so simple to use then too but this is just one I had it looks good fantastic and perfect for this particular um, use of it and I got it from I think Banggood for I don't know four or five dollars it was dirt cheap then too so it's just been waiting for this purpose to be used then too and I, I I'm not hooking up I'm not showing you all the hookup wires otherwise this is going to be a kind of a rat's nest here too but really you got your uh, five volts in and there's your five volts over here to hook it up to SDA SDL back up here in the far corner of the Arduino by the reset pin and then your ground pin, I'm actually using that over here as well on the ground pin by it. So it makes it real simple to just plug this thing in here too. And really that's that's the whole schematic. Uh, it's a real low part count. Um, and on this particular Arduino, I just I actually am using an Arduino clone. I, um, I found them to be very, very good. Uh, I have seen some weaknesses in some serial communication, but I'm not using it for this purpose and too. So it was a perfect adaptation. So... Anyway, that is the um, schematic, and these things, you be sure you have all these things bolted down so they're not flopping around, because you do have a line voltage here, and you don't want to make that making contact with places where it should be, should not be making contact. So anyway, yeah, so anyway, that's cause that's the schematics here. All right, I'm back here. Yeah, I do wrap it up in a towel here, too. And I, it's a good thing to do. We had an ice storm here and actually took the power off for about four hours. And this thing was just, it worked perfectly fine. And back here, you can see a little bottle of Star Span. That's actually, um, I use, I'm a beer maker, too, and I use a lot of Star Span to sterilize things. So a lot of the stuff is handled like sterilization, and it kind of keeps it nice and clean then, too. But I cannot believe how cheap, how good, how wonderful this yogurt is. You can get my uh, GitHub. I've actually uploaded the Arduino program right here too. Um, and here's the uh, information for the Thingiverse for the uh, Arduino holder as well. You can 3D print that as well then too. But yeah, this is a nice simple program. Uh, we are so impressed. I always actually make the last of the... Um, use the last jar to start the next batch. So I keep that one nice and clean all the time. So anyway... Hope this helps. Hell, one more thing before I go. I know I was real fortunate. I had this West Bend cooker built like a tank. I got it at an auction decades ago. Still working fantastic. I have seen these things for sale on um, eBay, $20 or so. I've even seen them in Goodwill shops, whatever. So, yeah, they are perfect for this. However, I know there's a lot of round ones with insulation built into the slow cooker that would not be appropriate. You could not put the sensor on the outside of it. And if I had to actually put a sensor into the bath, I know they have these uh, DS18B20s, okay, and I, I, I have some waterproof ones. I've used them outside. However, a waterproof sensor that's going to be good for rain outside it's not the same thing as putting it in a hundred some degree of water and soaking it for eight hours at a time that would probably test the metal <laughs> just just to see how good the waterproofing is and if that's the challenge i think i had i'd probably go out and get a test tube now this is one i have this is a 22 uh, millimeter one i think the vanilla beans come in i've seen cigars come in these things the glass tubes and i think i would go ahead and put the sensor into the bottom here make sure it contacts something on the side so it's pretty resistant keeping all material away from it or mass so it's pretty responsive and then either caulking gluing or something in here so i would um keep the water from getting into it then too and i still i would not immerse the whole thing and have i'd probably have it standing up in the um in the water somehow too this may be a little bit taller for mine but it might be perfect for your uh, a little bit taller um, slow cooker. So, anyway, that would—that's what I do. I've never done this. It's only theoretical. If it works, hey, drop me a line. I've been kind of curious about it here too. And again, the picture I have on the screen right now. This is how I calibrate these things. I had two of my thermometer thermometers in here and I kind of matched the temperature of the water I wanted to what the sensor was saying in the back and that's all set up in the software you can just go in there and look at that there's a line right there of descriptions on there to how to do that so anyway I I'm done now <laughs>